Hi there and welcome to this tutorial on sampling methods for the Edexcel S2 A-Level module. Uh, this is a crash course in the S2 uh, module and we've just got one more video to go after this. As always, um, if you're looking for further help with your studies, do check out youtube.com slash mrarnoldsmaths or follow me at mrarnoldsmaths. Now, sampling methods. Uh, this is hardly the most exciting chapter of the uh, of the course. However, it needs to be done. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to save time um, giving you definitions and then writing those definitions in the context of questions. And I'm just going to use uh, the definitions uh, to answer the questions. So we're just going to do uh, about five exam questions here and hopefully you'll have an idea of what you need to know for sampling methods. Okay, first thing we're going to look at is June 2010 and it's question one. Um, I'm asked to explain what I understand by a population. So in order to speed things up, I've got things pre-written. Uh, so a population is a collection of all individual people or items. So a collection of all people or items. And a statistic, a statistic is a random variable that's a function of the sample which contains no unknowns or parameters. Um, Next part, a researcher took a sample of 100 voters from a certain town and asked them who they would vote for in an election. The proportion who said they would vote for Dr. Smith was 35%. So we're asked to state the population and the statistic in this case. Well, the population is a collection of all people or items. In this case, it's going to be a collection of all the voters in the town. So we've got all the voters in the town is the population and the statistic is the proportion that vote for Dr. Smith. Okay, so we've got the population, all voters in the town, and the statistic is the proportion voting for Dr. Smith. Uh, last part here, um, explain what you understand by the sampling distribution of the statistic. Well, this one's quite a complicated one. It's the probability distribution of those voting for Dr. Smith from all possible samples. So um, we'll, we'll see an idea of what the sampling distribution is in the next question. <clears throat> Okay, this is from January 2010 and it is question 7. We're told that a bag contains a large number of coins. It's only got 1s and 2s and it's in the ratio of 1 to 3. We're asked to find the mean and the variance of the values in this population of coins. Well, we have to remember that um, if I'm picking out only 1s and 2s, we're dealing with a discrete random variable. So you're going to need a little bit from the S1 course here. So, um, if the... Uh, We've got w one piece and we've got two piece, and they're in the ratio of one to three. So, what are the, if I choose um, one of the coins out of the bag at random? What are the different options we could have? So, the different values of x we have are one p and two p. And what about the probability that I choose a coin and I get a particular value? So what's the probability that, um, this should be a little x, uh, the probability that we get a 1p? Well, 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 if it's in a ratio of 1 to 3, that means we've got four parts in total and one quarter of them are going to be pennies. That means that three quarters will be 2p's. Okay, now to find the mean mu. The mean is also known as the expected value of x. And to get the expected value of x, we do each value of x and multiply it by its probability, and then we add them all together. So I need to do 1 times a quarter, and then add 2 times 3 quarters. 1 times a quarter is a quarter. 2 times 3 quarters is 6 quarters. So overall, that gives me a value of 7 over 4. So that's the expected value of x. I'm also asked to calculate the variance, also known as var x. And var x, we get that by doing the expected values squared minus the expected value of x, all squared. So the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Well, the mean of the squares is going to be calculated by doing each individual value of x squared times by its probability. So, 1 squared times a quarter. And we have to add each one together. 2 squared times 3 quarters. And I need to take away the square of the mean. 
so 7 over 4 squared okay and um, when we do all of that we're going to get a value of 3 over 16 okay so that's the first part and um, the next part part B we're asked to, um, it says a random sample of size 3 is taken from the bag list all possible samples so let's just scroll down make a little bit of space okay so all possible samples well if I'm going to choose three coins from the bag and we've got ones and twos to choose from I could get three ones so what we want to do here is make sure that we we do this in a systematic manner I could also get two ones and a two and there's different ways I can get that so a one then a two then a one and then I could get a two on the first go and then get two ones so we've had all ones we've had one two and two ones now I'm going to do two twos and one one bit of a tongue twister there so uh, we could get one on the first go and then two twos I could get two on the first go one on the second go two on the third go or I could get a two a two and then a one and then the last way would be if we got all twos so that is all possible samples the next part requires us to find the sampling distribution of the mean of the samples well first of all we have to consider what the mean is for each collection of samples if we look at this first one here the mean quite obviously is going to be one the mean of this sample is one the mean of this sample however is going to be 1 plus 1 plus 2 divided by 3 and that's going to give us 4 over 3 this sample here are these samples should I say will all have a mean of 5 over 3 and finally this one here will have a mean of 2 so we've got each sample written down we've got the list of all samples and then we've got the mean for each of those samples now we're going to work out the probability distribution for each mean so what is the probability that when I choose the three coins that we get the mean in other words let's look at the first one what is the probability that we get one well the only way that can happen is if I get a one and a one and a one and the probability of getting a one is going to be a quarter it needs to happen the first time and the second time and the third time which means it's one quarter cubed and one quarter cubed is one over 64 how about the probability that x equals uh, 4 over 3 so if the mean score the mean number of pennies I have after uh, choosing three pennies is 4 over 3 well there's first of all we have to recognize that there's three dif three different ways this can happen so we could have two ones the probability of a one being a quarter so we have to get a one and a one and then we have to get a two so I'm multiplying that by the probability we get a two which is three over four so this this here I'll just underline it in red this part is the probability that we get two ones and one two and there's three different ways it can happen now when we work that out we're gonna get nine over sixty four okay let's also do the probability that we get five over three that the average number of pennies is five over three well again there's three different ways that it can happen the probability we need to get 
two twos and one one. Well, one one is a quarter, and two twos is going to be three quarters squared. So three times one quarter times three quarters squared. When we work that out, we get 27 over 64. And then the last way, probability that x equals 2. So after I take out 3 pennies, that the average number of pennies I have is 2, or the mean number of pennies, well, there's only one way it can happen, and that's if we get a 2, a 2, and a 2, which is 3 quarters cubed. When we do that, we get 27 over 64. Okay, now we could also be asked to do this for the median value of the samples in which you'd work out the median for each sample. Or the mode. Again, you would work out the mode for each sample. And then calculate the probability or the sampling distribution, should I say. Alright, let's move on. Uh, from June 09, and this is question 3. Okay, so what we have here is a random sample, x1, x2, all the way up to xn, and it's taken from a population with unknown mean mu and unknown variance uh, sigma squared. A statistic y is based on this sample. We're asked to explain what I understand by the statistic y. Well, a statistic is a quantity that's calculated only from the observations in the sample, and it does not contain any unknown parameters. Now you may have noticed from your statistics course that you, you would have come across the mean written as x bar and the mean written as mu. Well, when it's written as x bar, that's the mean of a sample. And th when it's written as mu, it's from a population. Now we never actually know exactly um, the mean of the population. It's just a fact that's, that is um, estimated by using the sample mean. And we'll find that the sample mean will often vary depending on the sample. So the key things here, it's calculated only from observations in the sample and does not contain unknown parameters. If it contains mu or even sigma squared, then it's not a statistic. Explain what you understand by the sampling distribution of y. Well, the sampling distribution of a statistic gives all possible values of a statistic and the probability that each will happen by chance which is essentially what we've just done. We've, in the previous question, we listed all the different values that we could get when we chose three coins, and then we also worked out the probability for uh, the mean value. Okay, the last part. State giving a reason which of the following is not a statistic based on this sample. Well, a quick scan tells me straight away this is the one we're looking for, and that's not a statistic because it contains population parameters and population parameters are actually unknown. So these are variables. We can't use them. OK, next question. Um, explain what you understand by a census. Now, a census is just when we, uh, we question or we investigate all members of a population. So oh, wrong one there. Uh, all members of the population are investigated. That's a census. Um, each cooker produced by uh, at GT Engineering is stamped with a unique serial number. GT Engineering produces cookers in batches of 2,000. Before selling them, they test a random sample of five to see what the current overload, or what electric current overload they will take before breaking down. State, giving one reason, other than to save time and cost, why the sample is taken rather than a census. Well, simply, if we tested everything, all members of the population, which would be all cookers, there would be no cookers left to sell. Uh, Next part, suggest a suitable sampling frame in which to obtain the sample. So, I mean, how could we how could we categorize or list our um, our cookers? Well, I would do a list using the unique serial numbers for all the cookers, and then the sampling units are the cookers themselves. Okay, June 06. Uh, before introducing a new rule, the secretary of a golf club decided to find out how members might react to this rule. Explain why the secretary decided to take a random sample of club members rather than ask all members. And it's fairly straightforward. If I ask every single member, it's going to take a lot of time and probably cost me a lot of money. So um, it's going to save time and money.
that's the most generic answer um, suggest a suitable sampling frame well a list of all members from the club would be nice and then finally identify the sampling units the members of the club so i mean that question is awfully similar to the one we just did previously anyway that's all from me hopefully you found the video useful and um, i'll be back with the final video in the crash course s2 module uh, take it easy and best of luck with the revision